centuries shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind the nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wonderfully clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, we rise. In late August 1619, a ship called the White Lion arrived in Port Comfort, what we now know as present-day Hampton, Virginia. The White Lion was one of two ships that would arrive, only a few days apart from each other, carrying our ancestors, enslaved Africans who survived both a harrowing journey through the Middle Passage and a battle in the Gulf of Mexico before being sold for food and supplies starting a life of forced labor in the native, nearby Jamestown settlement, which was the land of the Powhatan Indian. We don't know the names and we don't know the full stories of the 20 and odd Negroes who arrived that August. What we do know is that they were captured in the Kingdom of Ndongo in Angola and forced onto a Portuguese slave ship called the San Juan Batista, bound for Veracruz, Mexico. Over 40% of the enslaved Africans, 350 women, men, and children aboard the San Juan Batista would die on that journey. En route to Mexico, the San Juan Batista was attacked by two English pirate ships, the White Lion and the Treasurer. It was during this battle on the high seas that 50 to 60 Africans were seized from the San Juan Batista with between 20 and 30 placed on the white line bound for Virginia, the Virginia colony. The treasurer would arrive a few days later and sell enslaved Africans there in the colony as well before selling to Bermuda. The arrival of our Angolan ancestors marked the beginning of 246 years of slavery in the US. While enslaved Africans were previously brought to North America by the Spanish, who sought to colonize Florida and South Carolina, the African landing in 1619 in English-occupied North America happened at the same time that the U.S. was in its early days of establishing itself as a nation. Through the forced labor and knowledge of farming techniques and ironworks, African people were foundational to the building of the U.S., enabling the struggling English colonies to survive. Few institutions have defined our nation and has had such a lasting impact as slavery. Over 12.5 million Africans were taken as captives, sold throughout the Americans during the transatlantic slave trade. For hundreds of years, African Americans endured horrific acts of violence, sexual assault, and death. After emancipation, with anti-black laws, norms, and practices, well established through the institution of slavery, Nearly 100 more years of lynching and segregation would follow. But despite these atrocities, a beautiful and rich tradition of African American culture emerged. Today, the journey to freedom and liberation continues as we fight the current manifestations of racial oppression, such as mass incarceration, police violence, gentrification, and other forms of systemic racism. So the Center for Urban and Racial Equity is a small, collective, and research consulting firm that works every day with organizations and government agencies to challenge these inequities and the practices and policies that work to create them. We see a direct connection to the work that we do every day with the 400 year struggle for the black liberation. So the very reason why we exist, my personal mission and the mission of CURE is basically to fundamentally dismantle the legacy of slavery and white supremacy that continues to permeate every institution in this country from healthcare to housing. So this evening as we commemorate the 400th anniversary of the African landing, we acknowledge the untold stories and histories of people of the African diaspora in America. And in thinking about the theme for tonight's event and the message of the 1619 commemoration, 
we drew from the great storyteller and poet Maya Angelou, who left us with such beautiful stories and words of black people finding hope and courage in a country and in a world that continues to tell us that our lives don't matter. So tonight I'm so excited to welcome you and to welcome our storytellers for an evening of black truth telling and black storytelling through, through, uh, through spoken words and through stories about enslaved people, stories about integration, and stories about living while black in 2019 that make the echoes of 1619 loud and profoundly clear. So I want to say that I'm so excited that all of our storytellers are local folks from the DMV area. And we're kicking off this event during CBC weekend. So many times we don't hear the voices of local folks. So I just want to acknowledge and lift up the importance of us gathering and holding space for local storytelling. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jocelyn, who's going to introduce our first storytellers. <laughs> 